Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Ball. Thanks for being with us. Today our show is called Show Me the Money. My guest now is Tom Walsh. Please welcome Tom. He's Senior Vice President with Grandbridge Real Estate Capital. Tom, thanks for joining us again in Studio One. Thank you, Michael. Great to be here. We appreciate you being here. And uh, first, I'd like to talk about the various sources for money today. I mean, if you have an apartment complex or a single tenant net lease property or or maybe you're an owner-occupied business, there's better sources for money, right? So let's start with multifamily. Uh, what's the best source for good money for financing there? Well, the multifamily industry is kind of the broadest market for financing because it includes the two big 800-pound gorillas, Fannie and Freddie, that don't play in any other market. On, on the financing side, there's various options in multifamily. Probably your, your, your first option is usually going to be Fannie or Freddie. If you have a brand new, really high class deal, the life insurance companies will get in and, and battle toe to toe with Fannie and Freddie for that business, even at, at top leverage. Um, and they'll win, they'll win some of that business. They'll beat Fannie and Freddie on pricing. Uh, by and large, though, if, if you're not in a high quality, high, real, real high quality new kind of deal, the life insurance company is usually going to be a little lower leverage than Fannie and Freddie. You know, Fannie and Freddie will go to 75% routinely on refinances. They'll go to 80% on acquisitions of property. And they'll do everything from the, the, the top of the line, highest quality deal down, I would say, probably to the B minus deal around there or so. Other than that, uh, the, the, the lower quality stuff at low leverage is quite often handled by the life insurance companies. Mm. Um, if you need higher leverage on, the, on say, the, the, the lower quality levels, um, that's really where the CMBS industry steps in. And uh, they do a fair amount of multifamily. Uh, by and large, uh, on, on the multifamily side, the CMBS industry kind of does what the other ones won't do. That doesn't imply at all that, that, that they're doing bad deals or bad business. But you know, Fannie and Freddie have kind of decided what their product segment is mm -hmm. and a few years ago made the decision to kind of move up out of the C-class property. And the CMBS industry stepped into that void, and, and that's kind of where they play. Okay. Well, that's good information. What about single-tenant net lease properties? And if you have a CVS or a Dollar General, what's the best sources there? Really two options there. Um, there's a, there's a body of lending called CTL lending, um, which is available if you have an investment gate credit tenant. CVS, Walgreens, what you just mentioned, um, among you know, there's, there's probably 100 investment grade tenants out there, maybe more, and, and the CTL industry will take care of those. Their way of lending is, is kind of unique in, in that they lend totally against the lease. Mm -hmm. All they really care about are the terms of the lease and the credit behind the lease. They don't really care about the building. They don't care about the location. They don't care about the borrower. To them, that lease is just a promise to make X number of rental payments over a period of time, and they'll finance that. Um, on, on some investment grade tenants, but pretty much all your non-investment grade tenants, uh, that's where the life insurance companies step in. And you know they'll do your uh, you know your your Rite Aids your I'm trying to think of some non-investment good um, Verizon people like that um, where those are very viable single tenant properties but they're not investment grade tenants so the CTL business really can't play with that the life insurance companies will step into that void and and, and they'll play in that market life insurance companies by and large in doing that are are not going to be pushing leverage like the CTL lenders will. Um, and what leverage will CTL do? CTL will do up to 105. It just matters how your numbers work. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't care uh, really about the economic value of the property. They only care about the income stream. Uh, now, I'm exaggerating saying 105%. It's not at all unusual to find a 92% loan, though, in the CTL world. The life insurance companies, they do care about value. And they will, you know, they'll be down in the say the 75% or lower usually, 
um, and they're actually really most comfortable playing like in that 65% range or so. Okay. And what about owner-occupant loans? If a business has their own property they, they own, what's the best sources for them? Um, a lot of that business is done in the bank, still done in the banking business. Uh, there are some life insurance companies uh, that do owner-occupied property. I would say the majority of them don't, but there are some that do. And that involves a different type of underwriting. Obviously, you're underwriting the credit worthiness and the viability of a company versus, versus an income stream and the real estate involved. Uh, the real estate's important with the life insurance companies, but the source of repayment in that case is really not the real estate. It's the, it's the company, so the underwriting is a little different there. I, I would say, though, the majority of the owner-occupied stuff around the country is really still done by the banking industry. Yeah, and the banks love to, to do loans for them, too, because they also have the banking relationship. Yeah. Right? You know, they'll, get, they'll get the banking relationship from that yeah. company. They may be able to factor their accounts receivable. They may be able to provide them insurance services. They can really you know, kind of become a full-service financial institution for that client. Right, yeah, and they're, they're aggressively out there looking to loan on uh, owner-occupied business property. So, so check that out if you have one of those properties. Well, stay tuned. We'll have more on financing on Show Me the Money. I'm Michael Ball. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Advisors, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive and powerful suite of commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R-E-A-L-N-E-X. FIU, Florida International University. Earn your master's in real estate in as little as 10 months without interrupting your career. Visit FIUonline.com. Excelligent, the resource professionals use for commercial real estate information. Visit Excelligent.com. That's X-C-E-L-I-G-E-N-T. Commercial Search, the source to market and source available properties for sale or lease. Visit CommercialSearch.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional videos, podcasts, or articles, visit CREshow.com. <laughs> 